Okay, so picture this. What if I told you that back in the day, some doctors thought the best way to deliver babies was to, well, spin them out? You're kidding, right? Sounds a little um, intense, to say the least. No joke. We're talking about a real patent from 1965 for a centrifugal baby delivery device. Buckle up, because we're going deep on this one. A centrifugal oh, device, yeah. like a salad spinner for babies. You're not far off. But yeah, this deep dive is for anyone who, like us, is fascinated by those what were they thinking mm. moments in history, especially when it comes to uh, creative approaches to medicine. I'm all in. I've always said that truth is stranger than fiction, and this sounds like a prime example. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about a real patent that was actually approved. Like yeah. Someone looked at this idea and said, yep, let's make this happen. You got it. Someone at the U.S. Patent Office actually reviewed this thing and said, yep, this could work, which really makes you wonder, what were they thinking back then? Seriously, it sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, you know. But we're talking about 1965, not exactly the future. So who came up with this uh, revolutionary idea? So the masterminds behind this invention were a couple, actually George and Charlotte Blonsky. And get this, the patent itself is incredibly detailed. I mean, they really thought this through. Diagrams, explanations, the whole shebang. Wow, they were committed. But before we get into the nitty gritty of how you even design a spinning baby machine, can you give us some context? What was going on in medicine, particularly around childbirth in the mid 60s? Right, because we can't just jump into a time machine without packing the proper historical luggage or uh, something like that. Exactly. We need the backstory. So. Imagine the post-World War II era, a time of like incredible technological advancement. Everything seemed possible, right? And medicine was no exception. There was this massive wave of fascination with technology and how it could be used to solve, well, everything. Oh, I see. So kind of a, there's an app for that mentality, but for medicine. Exactly. But, and this is a big but, it was also a time when doctors, you know, often had this very paternalistic view, especially towards women in healthcare, like, meaning that women's voices their experiences weren't always given the weight they deserved you know there is this underlying assumption that technology often driven by male perspectives always knew best even when it came to something as natural as childbirth so you're saying there was this belief that technology could actually improve upon nature even when it came to bringing a new life into the world precisely Sometimes natural childbirth was seen as riskier or less desirable compared to more technology driven approaches Fascinating. So we've got this backdrop of incredible technological optimism, maybe a little too much optimism, mm. and a tendency to overlook women's experiences. And that's where the Blonskys enter the picture with their, wait for it, centrifugal birthing device. It's like a solution in search of a problem. Right. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. Now, I have to admit, reading this patent was a wild ride. But for our listeners who haven't had that, shall we say, unique pleasure, can you give us the elevator pitch? What was the core idea behind using centrifugal force to, you know, that help deliver a baby? Okay, so the patent actually says that this device is all about making childbirth less stressful for the mother. Basically, they thought they could use, get this, controlled centrifugal force to either assist or even completely replace the mother's efforts during labor. Hold on, so instead of pushing, you just spin. That's wild. Yeah, you got it. The idea was that the spinning motion would kind of mimic the natural forces of labor, but, you know, with a little external help. A little or a lot, depending on how fast they crank up the spin cycle, I imagine. Right. OK, I can't help but laugh a little, but let's talk about the uh, contraction itself, because the patent actually goes into a lot of detail. What did this thing actually look like? Yeah, pent is a picture. I want to try to wrap my head around this thing. OK, so try to picture this. Hmm. A rotating platform, like a giant lazy Susan you know, with a stretcher strapped on top. Yeah. Makes sense. You wouldn't want mom rolling off mid-spin. Wait, strapped on? Oh, yeah. Definitely strapped in. Safety first, right? And it gets wilder. The patent actually talks about adjustable features, you know, to make sure it could be used by women with different body types. And there was a counterbalance system so the whole thing wouldn't rattle itself apart while it's spinning. And get this, a net. A net. Okay, now you're losing me. A net for what? To catch the... The baby. Yep, a net to catch the newborn. It even mentions... Let me see. A thick cotton pad at the bottom to protect the child against too direct a contact, you know, with the automatic shutoff mechanism. Hold on. Hold on. An automatic shutoff. How is this thing supposed to know when to, you know, stop spinning once the baby makes its grand entrance? Okay, so get this. When the baby lands in the net, the baby's weight triggers a lever, and that lever cuts the power to the motor, which brings the whole 
uh, spinning spectacle to a halt. Okay, but what if something goes wrong? Like, what if the lever jams or something? Did they at least think about, like, an emergency brake? They totally did. Oh. There was a handbrake included in the design just in case you needed to slam on the brakes during this whole centrifugal birthing experience. It's like they were so preoccupied with making sure the baby didn't become a human projectile that they forgot to, you know, maybe rethink the whole concept in the first place. Well, they didn't stop there. They also included something called a governor system, kind of like what you'd find on a steam engine to prevent excessive spinning. They really thought of everything. Because exceeding the recommended RPMs during childbirth is definitely something you want to avoid. Did they at least have like, I don't know, different settings for different stages of labor? Well, the patent mentions different positions for the mother, horizontal or inclined, because they thought that adjusting the angle could somehow like optimize the direction of the centrifugal force. Wow. They were really committed to this idea, weren't they? I mean, it's incredible how much thought and detail went into designing this device, but it also begs the question, did anyone actually ask for a centrifugal birthing machine? Was this like a common request back in the day? You know, that's the thing. There's no mention of any like widespread demand for this kind of labor-saving device. Uh -huh. I think it's safe to say it wasn't exactly a top item on expectant mother's wish lists. Probably for the best. But like we were talking about before, this invention didn't just appear out of thin air, right? The post-war era was obsessed with technology, sometimes to a fault. But this thing, the spinning baby machine, I think it goes beyond a simple fascination with gadgets. It makes you really question the assumptions people had about women's bodies and the birthing process itself. I totally agree. And you know what? The patent itself actually gives us a few clues about their thought process. For example, it specifically mentions that this device was designed to help women who were unable to physically exert themselves during labor. Wait, you mean women who couldn't, you know, push? I agree with so that. like they looked at a natural physiological process and said, you know what, we can fix that. It's a little unsettling to say the least. It is. It really makes you think about the biases baked into some technological advancements. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit. We've got this bizarre contraption, this spinning baby machine, designed to literally spin babies into the world. And we've got this underlying assumption that women's bodies aren't equipped for childbirth without some kind of technological intervention. It's a lot to process, to say the least. It's almost like they, I don't know, wanted to like engineer the inconvenience of childbirth out of the equation. It really is a perfect example, you know, of how these cultural biases can sneak into technological development. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about something as fundamental as, well, childbirth. Yeah. And what kind of message would that send if this thing had actually taken off? Like, imagine if this had become the norm. Kind of scary to think about, honestly. Yeah. It could have reinforced this whole idea that women's bodies aren't, like, equipped for childbirth on their own. And that could lead to even more medicalization of the birthing process. Yeah. And that could end up, you know, devaluing the experience of giving birth. Yeah, no kidding. It's definitely for the best that it never, you know, went beyond the patent stage. Can you imagine the risks involved? And we haven't even gotten into the ethical implications of a machine literally designed to spin babies out of their mothers. Right. Where do you even start? Informed consent alone would be a nightmare. Like, how do you fully explain all the potential risks of something like this. It's just, it's mind blowing. You know, this one patent, it's like opening a Pandora's box of ethical and societal questions. It really makes you appreciate how important it is to, you know, recognize and value individual experiences, especially in something as personal as childbirth. 100%. So here we are reflecting on this well, bizarre and kind of terrifying patent from 1965. We've talked about the historical context, the uh, mechanics of this spinning contraption, and the whole debate it sparks about technology and childbirth, and of course the assumptions people made about women's bodies. So for our listeners, what's the takeaway here? I think it highlights, you know, how crucial critical thinking is, especially when we're talking about technology and its impact on our lives. Just because we can invent something doesn't mean we should. Well said. It's like they say innovation without consideration can backfire big time. Exactly. We have to constantly ask ourselves, OK, why are we doing this? You know, look at the big picture and really think about the potential consequences, both good and bad. Couldn't agree more. We can't just blindly embrace every shiny new tech without thinking about its impact. Right. We got to look at the downsides, too. And on that note, I think it's time to uh, 
wrap up this deep dive into the world of centrifugal childbirth. It's been quite the ride, maybe a little nausea inducing for some. Just a tad. But for those of you who enjoy those what if scenarios, here's a little something to ponder. The patent mentions that the inventors, they were also interested in exploring this machine for other purposes. Other purposes. Yeah. So what other applications could there possibly be for a human centrifuge? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination. Oh, boy. Join us next time on The Deep Dive, where we'll be exploring hopefully a slightly less um, dizzying patent from the archives. Thanks for listening.